This room is a collaboration space. There's a lot of conferencing going around in the world, right? Uh, and so high-end spaces like this, we call them high-impact spaces, have elevated requirements for audio, video, and control. We're trying to get people back into the office and enticing them by having meeting rooms that are really intuitive and immersive and make the meeting a better experience. So that's what we're going to be doing in here. I'm going to show you a meeting. We're going to watch about 30 seconds of a fake meeting and I want you to pay attention to a couple of things. First of all, this is going to be a Microsoft Teams meeting in which we are doing their signature experience of the front row uh, in which we will see and hear the noises of the participants panned left and right based on where they are on screen. So pay attention to that as you're listening, unless you're watching on home via your video, in which case you won't be able to hear it because you're not here. You're just watching, you're hearing a stereo image. Anyways, uh, for here in the room, we're going to experience that. I also want you to pay attention to what's happening in the room as we set it up. Because even though I'm just going to be hitting a button on the Microsoft Teams controller to start the meeting, we can use that activity to send all kinds of commands to QSIS. So I start the meeting and we're going to change the lights and the sounds in the room. Call started. So we have a good meeting. Good morning, everyone. Morning. morning. Good morning. I trust everyone is well rested and ready to put this budget to bed. So. Product development. Let's start with you. Look, I've already cut 12%. If I cut any deeper, we won't have anything left to sell. Look, Lindsay, we go through this every year. Every department is making sacrifices. Yeah, we sit and we make excuses instead of getting creative and doing the work. Yeah, well said. Uh, sorry, is anyone else looking at line 280? Yeah, it looks like there is an entire GL dedicated to the ice cream sandwich club. Huh? <laughs> Weird. Totally. <laughs> Someone's been charging 10K every quarter to that geo. That's yeah. ridiculous. Well, yeah, but also it's not that much money, right? Right? It, it sounds like a rounding error or something. Yeah, it sounds like someone's getting fired is what it sounds like. I'm gonna mute this call. Call muted. I can mute the call just by waving my hand over this microphone, by the way, with a proximity sensor in our NMT1 microphone. Uh, did you hear how it sounded like their voices were located based on where they are left to right in the room? Kind of more natural, feels like you're actually across the table from them, right? Pretty exciting. Also, did you notice all the things that are happening in the room as we interact with it? I mean, turning the LEDs on the microphone red when you're muted, that's pretty standard. We did the same thing with our, you know, our partner microphone up in the sky, but we're doing other things too. We have LEDs on the walls that are changing the room itself to be red. We're changing the signage in the room so that if you're in the room, you know that privacy mode is engaged intentionally. We're also sending that graphic to the far end so they know that you did that on purpose and not wondering whether or not you accidentally hit video mute or something like that. Take a look at the cameras. The cameras have turned around and are facing the wall. So you know that you are not being seen by the far end because they literally can't see you. These are the kinds of things that we can automate to make this room more immersive and easy to navigate. Now, normally, uh, I, I said this was Microsoft Teams room. We're, you know, we're agnostic as far as what conference application you want to use. You could be Google Meet, it could be Zoom, et cetera. Normally, for any of those, you're going to have a touchscreen controller right here on the desk to start and stop that meeting. I've got them all over here, and I started it over here for a reason. But I want to show you what that experience looks like. I'm going to redirect that up to the big screen. So this is a page that we're seeing on the Teams controller. This looks like you're in the Teams environment. We've got the right colors and the right fonts and everything, but this is not actually part of Microsoft Teams GUI. This is an interface that we built on the QSIS side that we can deliver to the touchscreen controller that the user can navigate to. Now, why did we do that? We did it so that it feels like you're still in the Teams environment, but in actuality, you're now interacting directly with QSIS because I don't want someone here to feel like they're learning two different types of systems just to control the room, right? I want everything in one place. And I don't want someone to have to run across the room and turn on the lights over here and the HVAC controls are over on this side of the wall, right? And there's three different touch panels across the desk. Then you get confused and people are gonna have a hard time in this room. Have you ever met people before? Have we all interacted with people? Yes. What are people? They're Awful, right? That's that's pretty. They're awful. They they will get something wrong if you let them get something wrong. Put it on one pane of glass so they can't get it wrong. And if they do still get it wrong, then we can give them an option. Help desk. Like I'm going to give them a, a, a just an option here to go over to my help desk. Come here, help desk. And I want to call for help. Help desk has been requested. 
Please yeah. stand by for further instructions. Now I can get an email sent to the IT department. I can get a notification on the Microsoft Teams channel so that IT knows that someone in this room requires assistance just as easily as that. I can control everything else in this room too. I could change the lighting. I could change the different types of contents that's on the side displays. Whatever it is that QSIS can control, we can put that power right in their hands. So that's the goal for rooms like this. Intuitive, immersive, and reactive to the behavior that they need. Yes? Yeah. Brilliant. All right. Okay, for legal purposes, I have to say that not all people are terrible, even though I did reference that. All right. Okay, so we're done with this room. We're going to go through the next door, and we'll talk about lecture hall spaces. Yeah.